All right, guys, so in less than a month, Apple will be releasing their next major update for the iPhone. That is iOS 26.2. And you may be asking yourself, is it worth upgrading from iOS 26.1 to the next iOS 26.2? Well, in today's video, I wanted to share my thoughts with you guys in regards to everything that I think is worth a mention with iOS 26.2 before you decide to update. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So the first thing I want to talk about is animations. Obviously, animations are going to be important. They make the OS either feel faster or slower and even more intuitive so with ios 26.2 apple has updated animations once again so let me give you here a quick example if i click here on this dot for the menu and controls you see there we have that liquid glass animations that flows very nicely and for some reason it makes the os feel a lot nicer number one and number two a lot faster so what you're looking at here is on the left ios 26.1 animations and on the right iOS 26.2 and again you have that liquid glass effect throughout the animations when navigating the OS and honestly this actually makes the OS feel more alive number one and number two faster to navigate and easier to navigate in my opinion so navigation with new animations definitely something that it's going to feel different when you update to iOS 26.2. Now the next thing I want to talk about is some of the latest changes happening to liquid glass with iOS 26.2. Now before we talk about those changes I wanted to share a quick word from our sponsor for today's video. Today's video is sponsored by eMeet. eMeet Pico Plus is the world's first dual lens 4K camera with AI features built in. With an eye-catching panda-like inspired design and its human-like appearance, it offers a magnetic privacy cover that makes it stand out. AI detects head and shoulders to locate your face and with the other lens, the Pico Plus and Pico are powered by a deep learning algorithm which enables a more natural facial exposure, especially in a strong backlit environment. The Pico Plus offers a three microphone array with noise reduction, original sound, and live stream mode for a versatile high fidelity audio experience. Its 4K video and professional audio quality ensures a polish engaging viewer experience, works seamlessly with all major streaming platforms, and provides a hassle free setup extremely simple for creators. So make sure to check out eMeet's Pico Plus for an amazing webcam experience. Links as always will be available in the description down below. Thank you to eMeets for sponsoring today's video. So there's two changes happening with liquid glass with iOS 26.2. Number one, you can no longer use reduced transparency alongside the new changes to liquid glass. So if you go with clear or tinted and you have reduced transparency enabled, you would have to disable that reduced transparency in order to use the changes happening to liquid glass. And number two, you now have the ability to customize the actual liquid glass within the clock of the lock screen. So if you go into customizing, click on the clock here, you can go ahead obviously and make the clock larger as you normally could. But if you tap once again, you now have a new scrubber down here for the intensity of liquid glass. So you can go all the way to the right for that tinted glass effect and all the way to the left for full on glass effect as you can see right there. So yeah, two changes happening with iOS 26.2. You can now change the liquid glass look within the lock screen and you can no longer use the reduced transparency option when using liquid glass effects within iOS. Now I wanna talk about performance in battery life. This is most important to some of you guys. So I wanted to share with you guys the latest benchmark performance and I wanna talk about the battery life. Now in terms of overall performance, navigating the OS, and just using my iPhone day in and day out. I can't say I have noticed any crashes or hiccups or stutters or anything like that, any choppiness whatsoever. Everything is flowing as intended. In my opinion, the software feels very, very smooth. Now, with that being said, here's the latest benchmark. So we have iOS 26.1, as you see right there, iPhone 17 Pro Max. We see the single core score is 3,821 and the multi-core score is a staggering 9,923. Now, fast forward to iOS 26.2, same device, obviously, single core score, 3,130, so we see a drop in single core performance on the latest 26.2, and the multi-core performance also saw a drop to 9,719, so those are going to be the numbers, as you see right there, with iOS 26.1 versus 26.2, these numbers tell me that the performance has decreased slightly, but it's not really noticeable when you navigate the OS, I haven't noticed, again, any choppiness or issues within the operating system. Now, the last thing I want to talk about, most importantly, 
is battery life. Now, battery life on iOS 26.1, in my opinion, has improved quite a bit ever since the release of iOS 26. So the best battery life so far for me has been iOS 26.1. However, iOS 26.2, currently running on this device right now, definitely gets me through my entire day. I get anywhere from seven to eight hours of on-screen time. So I wouldn't say that the battery life has gotten worse with iOS 26.2. It just hasn't gotten any better. So the battery life has sustained the same performance with iOS 26.1 going over to iOS 26.2. So no major changes happening in battery life performance. No increase, no decrease. And there you guys have it just before the update gets released. These are going to be some of the things that I've experienced that actually make a difference. And let me know what you think about the software so far if you're running the betas. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.